Colonel Arun Raj, I welcome you. It's a pleasure to be here in your studio talking to you. Uh, as you are aware that uh, this interview is part of the playlist Kuch Purani Yade of Lex mm -hmm. Consilium Foundation. And uh, I would be very happy to go into the background to talk about your work, which is a passion with you and when you are the ultimate and perhaps the only name of uh, that caliber in India as far as uh, military art is concerned. We would start with, tell me something about your early days. How were you drawn into painting, portraits, etc.? Did you receive any formal training? No, I didn't uh, receive any formal training. But what I did was that um, I was encouraged by my parents to some degree because I was not doing very well academically in school. So they said that this was disturbing my studies. But overall, my father did, and my mother to a point, did encourage me. And till the point I joined the NDA. So there was no basic training at all from that point. It is believed that uh, you had met uh, Mr. Lakshman mm. even before you put on the NDA uniform for the first time. Is that true? It's where, it, it, you know, before my, I joined, my father was a little confused whether I was taking up the correct career in the army. So before I joined the NDA in January 1965, it took me to Lakshman a few days earlier in December 1964 uh, to find out whether I was doing the uh, taking up the correct job for my career. So Lakshman looked at my work. He says, being a cartoonist is not an easy job. It needs a lot of, um, you know, work and um, understanding of politics. You're going to be a political cartoonist. But um, he says, it's good, but I wouldn't say anything at this stage. So then he looked at me and said, where do you want to go? I said, NDA. He said, then why are you wasting my time here? <laughs> and he th threw us both out of the office. Okay. Uh, as far as your painting and your work is concerned, I'll start with the, your portrait of army chiefs. Uh, it is believed uh, that you have done portraits of all army chiefs. Mm. Uh, would you like to recall your uh, involvement in that project? And particularly, I would like to know your remarks about, uh, say, General uh, Tit Sharma and uh, Opi Malhotra. Um, well, I got into the Army Chief's uh, portraits. It's basically when I got picked up by the president for the portrait in uh, Rajput Vibhavan. The president was... So the uh, president came first, followed by yeah, Army Chief? Yeah, because my recognition came with Rajput Vibhavan. Before Rajput Vibhavan, I was... Nobody knew who I was. Even Army didn't know. Uh, Army, the Army didn't know. Maybe at the lower levels, but never under. Uh, so when, when I got picked up by the president, then everyone thought I must be good. And uh, so my value went up, to be more specific. So the first, uh, that time, General Reiner was the chief, and he commissioned me. I met um, General Bevur earlier, but not in contact with the president with some of the minor work. So that was a very short period of it, meeting him. But actually, the real work started with General Reiner and went on till the present chief all these years. It's I, I very interesting. In a way, it's something like uh, what's talked about uh, Tagore, yeah. that India got to know him after he got the Nobel Prize. Yeah. So in a similar way, Rashtrapati Bhavan came the, to know you. But, 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 yeah, that's yes. how the, the whole system works that way. Yes. Because uh, recognition never comes uh, without some godfather or somebody on top some giving, giving you the push. Incident, yeah. And uh, in fact, my work was as good before Rashtrapati Bhavan as much as afterwards. So there was no different quality of work. And, um, okay, when you said, talked about O.P. Malhotra, General Malhotra, and um, I remember, General. yeah, all these portraits were life-size portraits um, uh, painted for Chetwood Hall, IMA. Okay. And uh, these were official po record of, for posterity of the chiefs. Right. And so when uh, I did uh, O.P. Malhotra, I did General Reiner also. But when O.P. Malhotra, I did, interestingly, used to say, I'm too fat. Could you reduce my waist by an inch or two? 
and for an art, uh, for the artist, okay. uh, if they make a difference as long as they got his face correctly, okay. and they were probably happy about it. Mm. Um, after Jan Malhotra, of course, uh, another interesting episode. There are many of them, but uh, one of General Sharma, who actually uh, was wondering whether I was too uh, was adequate for a life-size portrait. Vien Sharma, yes. Uh, so General Vien Sharma. So um, I thought uh, you probably was hinting at his height. And uh, the only way you increase height in a portrait is the props that go along in a large painting, which could be a chair or a table. If you lower the height of the table, the man looks taller. Right. And he was delighted because he suddenly looked what he wanted. Uh, another celebrity that you have done, yeah. and uh, you earned name, fame because of that, it was uh, Mr. J.R.D. Tata. How was your experience with him? Well, J.R.D. I met because I won an award, All India Award, uh, on, on a caricature award where I, I caricatured him as a, uh, you know, with his favorite toys, Air India, you know, and he he was so fond of Air India, which eventually he lost out on. And uh, the fact I, I did it at that point of time when he was no more chairman of Air India and uh, the, the cartoon, actually, as you see in the picture, uh, shows that him playing with the, uh, all the toys, all aircrafts, which he was under him those days. So he then said, can you do me a painting, a sketch of that? And I did it for him. And then he put it up in his office in Bombay House, Bombay. And uh, eventually commissioned me to do a lot of, lot of portraits. And I have a couple of portraits in Bombay House of his oil portrait, but also a caricature of him, okay. which I mentioned. And uh, of course, uh, and some, for some companies uh, of Tata Group commissioned me to do him. That's it. Is it uh, true that uh, your first foreign trip was uh, kind courtesy JRD? Yes, uh, he, um, he gave me a scholarship in Dorajwe Tata Trust. Okay. Uh, some money was allotted for me to travel abroad. And um, so uh, I remember an incident where I was talking to him and uh, he said, can I do something for what you've given me, the sketch? So I said, no, I, uh, can I fly you somewhere? And I said, Bangalore. Okay. And Where were you then in Mumbai? No. So Sorry. Uh, no, I, I'm, uh, I wanted to tell you, I, did, I didn't mention Bangalore, but I was just going to say okay. the word, the man behind him was Mr. Sujit Gupta, who was okay. the boss of Tata Sun rep in Delhi. He was standing behind him yeah. and he showed me a picture of, uh, you know, imitated Statue of Liberty in New York. Okay. And I, so I, say, I was going to say Bang Bangalore, but then when I said New York, and he says, oh, no problem. So it was, okay. uh, eventually I went, I traveled on that money they gave me. And uh, uh, he was a good gesture. He was a great man. In fact, um, I would uh, rate him as one of the great human beings I met in my life. And a great business leader. And a great business, business leader. leader. This incident took place in Delhi or Mumbai? Yeah, in uh, Tata, has a Tata house here in Prithviraj Road at the, or Arangdi yes, Road. So yes. uh, it was there when I met okay. him. Okay. Uh, you are known thereafter to have freelanced with Reader Digest, Times of India, India Today, Indian Express, mm. and perhaps a number of other publications. And uh, moving out from freelancing later, you served with the Times of India for a number of years, yeah, yeah. where uh, you would have definitely met some of the best known India uh, journalists in India. Mm. What was your experience with the media houses? The media, media people. The media, I think uh, I had a great time in Times of India, and I spent seven years almost. And um, they looked up to me well. But I think that what they call the seven years itch eventually started getting in. But um, uh, I had a great time with the journalists. I met one of the, all the top journalists okay. at that point of time. And uh, I was also with the editorial, Times Into Editorial. Okay. And uh, so it was a great experience, you know. And so when I eventually quit, uh, I went back to my lonely job of painting without any companion around. Times India had a great atmosphere in you know meeting friends, talking to people, which is, is, was missing in 
painting. We're painting it just me and my canvas. Which are the some of the top journalists that you recall that you used to be associated with yeah. those days? I mean, they were, they, they, they the were, editors uh, of that yeah, time. editors, they, 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 they were Gautam Adhikari, they were Padgonkar, Padgonkar, yeah. Padgonkar, and uh, I think a couple of others later. Okay. But, and um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Did you interact with uh, Lakshman thereafter, after your uh, pre-NDS uh, stint? Uh, Lakshman actually came in contact with me because he saw my work. The by over a dozen India Today covers were done by me at that point of time. So he wanted to meet me and uh, he met me as an artist. Okay. Uh, not as a cartoonist. Okay. He, he had not seen my cartoon, cartooning at all. And so when uh, he met me, uh, yeah, we became friends. In fact, uh, he came a couple of times for dinner to our place and um, uh, we sat, had a good rapport. And then I think Times India, when they hired me, sounded him off in Bombay yes. that they're hiring me. And he was the first to say, take him. He didn't know I was a cartoonist. He thought I was a painter. And uh, so when I joined in, I joined uh, without any problem. And then later on, some work of mine, he had, you know, criticized Different me, guys. saying that uh, my uh, I was no comparison to him. He was, I think, a amazing genius as far as I was concerned. And he was a celebrated artist, you know, I was more of a, the other okay. kind. Uh, now, which other leading artists, yeah. particularly of India, yeah. uh, have you come in contact or interacted no. with them? No, not really. I wish I had. But my, uh, my concentration was basically portrait okay. and military art. And, right. uh, and these two, to tell you frankly, there was nobody in uh, to uh, to uh, you know to compete with me in this in India. I did for all three services, and um, it's very true. Uh, it is believed. Uh, it is so that uh, uh, your work is there in Rashtrapati Bhavan, North Block, South Block, National War Memorial, and number of other prestigious places. Yeah. Uh, have I left out some names where uh, no, your I, work can be seen? My work, my, I've got my work almost everywhere, most premier messes, Navy, very little of Air Force, okay. but uh, Army, uh, portraits, uh, military art. But um, in, in Delhi, uh, where I'm very proud of is uh, Manikshaw Center, which okay. is a very premier institute in India. Yes. It's got about 50, 60 paintings of mine. Also is uh, Battle Honors Mess. Battle Honors Mess, it's got another okay. couple of dozen paintings. Right. And uh, NDC has got, again, uh, at least a dozen plus. Okay. And um, uh, so every, all important institutions have it in Delhi. And of course, NDA, IMA, and other places outside Delhi. And so in many, many ways, my work, at least, I'm, I'm controlled that they're hanging in these places. Uh, in your entire career so far, yeah. which uh, decade or part of your life has been the busiest for you as far as painting is concerned? Which part of my life? Uh, Means when you were in 50s, your 50s, your 40s, your yeah. 60s, mm. when you did maximum work. Well, I mean, you at your creative best? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, to be very frankly, I had a wonderful life. I mean, I, okay. I uh, starting from early 20s, when I was in my mid-20s, I got recognized by the president. And so there was no looking back from that point because I, had, I kept on working. Although I was in the army, I also could spare time to work on it. And uh, I quit the army 30 years ago okay. to concentrate uh, you know, on my freelance work. You mentioned me. that uh, you had sort of got recognition when you were in mid-20s. Yeah. And you also said that uh, it came from Rashtrapati Bhavan. So, who was the first Rashtrapati that no, you... Rashtrapati, yeah. Okay. Well, let, let's... I'll, I'll go a little further than that. Yes. Actually, I, I was in Binaguri, uh, where I, uh, my work got really recognized by the GOC that time, by a general called Lakshman Singh Lahel. And then, fortunately, the, the, the co-commander called Harish Rai, General Harish Rai, he also took a lot of fascination in my work. And fortunately for me, he was from the Rajarav, Okay. Rajab rifles, and he Thank said that I am yes. my 
my center is in Delhi. They'll organize a painting exhibition of yours. Okay. And that's where the first start of my work started. So when the exhibition had, and it was all not for sale because it was picked from wherever it was hanging in my existing paintings. And uh, a couple of paintings I did original work. And one was on the flying um, uh, of the Seiko's action, PVC action, and Srinagar. And uh, that painting was gifted to the NDC. NDC then commissioned me to do the President of India. And that's how I got into Rashtrapati Bhavan. So that route was via NDC? Yeah, it came yes. uh, through the NDC. In fact, otherwise, you know. Yes. And then they asked me, the President wanted to see it. Yes. Not necessarily the President sees the portrait. Yes. He called for it and then um, I also said, but he autographed the painting. So he autographed my first painting of President Fakuddin Ali Ahmed. And that painting was hanging in Rashpati Bhavan. Subsequently, he commissioned me for Rashpati Bhavan. Right. Uh, now, in your painting career, uh, you seem to have, at least to me, made a total shift from cartoons to caricatures and portraits. Any particular reason for this? Well, I, uh, when I left, left Times of India, um, it was, uh, I, there was a couple of generals, army chiefs, who said that, why don't you utilize your talent uh, in military art? And we need it so badly in the services. And uh, so, and I myself, myself, my real love was military art because I've been doing military art even as a child. Okay. And that's how it started. And I, uh, I dumped my cartoons in 19, 2000 actually, when I left Times India. And from 2000 till date, I've been only were doing military art and portrait, nothing else. In fact, uh, as far as India is concerned, I don't think um, in the domain of uh, military art, anybody has contributed uh, yeah. as much as uh, you, Arun. Yeah, and, uh, thank you. Another thing I would like to know, I'm curious, that uh, some sort of a fraud or manipulation was said to have been done during your painting of Dhaka Surrender Ceremony. Oh, Would you well, like to talk a few words well, about it? Yeah, I mean, I was commissioned by General Krishna Rao okay. to uh, do the surrender for his office. A large when painting. You uh, when you were chief. Okay. And um, so General Krishna Rao then actually said that. Um, there's a little modification I want. He says that my tip of my cap is shown in the photograph. The cameraman didn't move to the left to get my face in. Could you put my face into the... So that became controversy because I was breaking away from the original photograph or the picture taken. Okay. And, um, but the fact remained he was there, but, but the, it, he was not included in the official photograph. In fact, most of the pictures uh, of Dhaka Surrender Ceremony, which is a very favorite and well-known uh, image, yeah, it's a, do not show uh, General Krishna Rao's presence at that point. Yeah, I mean, uh, that it did become controversial, and I think a lot of people did criticize that. But the fact remains, I had to do it because he was the chief, and I was just an ordinary soldier. Quite right. And uh, I vividly remember that when uh, I was in NDA and uh, you were also there, earlier and during our time. Um, I think almost all India journals used to have uh, right. caricatures right. and portraits done by you. Yeah, I mean... And, uh, uh, you, you, you had become well known even at that point of time amongst your compatriots. Yeah, yeah, and oh yeah. Uh, you were also known to have been associated and contributed to the National War Memorial in a significant manner. How do you recall your association with National War Memorial? Uh, National War Memorial, uh, actually, I came in by accident. When the reason is, um, when the whole concert was planned, I was nowhere in the picture. The architect, uh, builder, the, you know, ways people involved with it. It's only when they, I got a call from the National War Memorial saying that uh, your pictures have been re replicated or copied in bronze and stone. Um, uh, we would like you to help the sculptor. Yes. And the sculptor was a very famous sculptor. I was delighted. The person called um, uh, Ram Sutur, Sri Ram Sutur. And uh, he is the one who did the Sadar Patel statue in 
the 550 feet statue in Gujarat. So I was, I very, you know, with a lot of interest, I got into the whole thing. And then I was working with him and I helped him a lot because he was making a lot of mistakes. And a man was 94 years old, and it was unfair on him to have been taxed to do this. So yeah, after doing that, they did assure me my name will be given credit. I didn't. So, but I worked for a year with them. And then uh, what you see today in, in National War Memorials are all a work of mine, right? The portraits were copied from me, the Paramvit Chakras. And so were the battle painting, 10 of them, six in bronze and four in stone. So total 31 pieces of my work. And they did put up my name. You said 31 of your pieces are your, there in National War Memorial. Replicated, yeah. Replicated. Yeah. And uh, they didn't recognize me in a sense that they put my name in, in the inaugural plate. And then suddenly, on the day it was inaugurated by the Prime Minister, they removed my name and the architect's name, the guy who designed the whole thing. So I felt, you know, more than me, I felt sorry for the architect, a young man who was just making his life. And Whereas earlier you had been given an impression that you would yeah, give they, they, credit. Yeah, they gave me in writing also that I, my name will be carried. In fact, I put one of my demands was that I'll be recognized for my work. And that was And that, uh, that was broken. And uh, there's no way I could get it back. Uh, I would be interested to know because with such a long uh, association and having painted across almost uh, more than half a century, do you think that painting's reproduction mm. by way of sale, say for example, one finds uh, Raja Ravi Verma's uh, paintings, mm. um, oil, uh, they have been uh, reproduced. Yeah. Would that encourage and bring about an interest in I, painting? I, I would allow people to copy my work. It was done as per the original. But most of the work I've seen, which have been copied and my work copied, have been done by you know, half-baked artists who really don't have a hand. And uh, so when I see them, most of them are done in Mao or Derudun. And uh, they're probably cheap because they're just copying my work. First thing is, more than the copyright aspect of it, It is not copied well. So that motivated me to bring prints, military okay. prints, on canvas and paper. And they are being, you know, sold a little bit okay. now. Uh, what, how do you rate the state of military art in India? Mi- military art, I think in the early years after the British left, uh, the tradition they followed very vigorously, uh, capturing all battles with what? Uh, bit carry on. And when I came in, you know, about 20 years later, after independence, there, there still was a lot of motivation uh, to get military art done. And um, so I'm at it now, although I know it isn't at that level I saw 20 years ago. It is not there and that. But still, I, I feel one day, you know, my work gets recognized from the military art aspect of it. One is called National War Memorial. And I hope it goes further up there on the line. Right. Uh, how would you comment uh, with regard to the necessity of uh, the artists getting copyright of their work in India, which is still not very common, as each piece has to be sort of uh, subjected to copyright regime? Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know. I, I only feel that the, the copyright thing is, is not strong as in the West, where if you do anything which is breaks the copyright, a man really gets sued and whatnot. Here, p- people are copying my work. I know a lot of my work gets copied in various units and all that. And I have no way to do anything to stop them, you know. And uh, so that way, I do feel this copyright is not strong at all in this country. I wish it was. Then it to be strengthened. Strengthened. Okay. Uh, do you believe that uh, the work of military art, mm. uh, apart from the battle scenes mm. and the portrait of great military leaders, mm. should also extend uh, to sensitize people with regard to, say, acts of terror, that these need to be eliminated, curbed, or, say, use of child soldiers, or uh, the destruction havoc, played by the landmines? Yeah, I mean, in, in many ways, if you really look at my military art, which is all original work, I mean, 
I put a concept on paper and draw it. But in many ways, uh, an explosion, a thing like that, indicating some, you know, it may be IED or it could be a shell explosion or what. But by and large, as an artist, I try to avoid showing blood uh, thing directly. Although there is blood in the, uh, in, uh, the actual. in the actual scene, so avoid that. Uh, and it's a tradition even the West also follows, not to show too much of blood, which war generally creates. But otherwise, um, you know, to show uh, insurgency, I've done yeah. some insurgency paintings uh, in action. But um, so in a sense, it can be covered, what you're telling me. Uh, some of the well-known uh, works of military art mm. beyond India uh, include, uh, say, a piece like uh, Napoleon crossing the Alps or uh, General Washington mm. sailing down the river at uh, Delaware or uh, the one, there is a piece called Freedom uh, from Want. Mm. Uh, this is by Jacques Louis Davids. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. uh, which of these has impressed you most. Well, I I think the artists I, I love, which you mentioned, freedom of want and freedom from, you know, whatever it is, yeah. is Rockwell, Norman Rockwell. And he probably is my role model in many ways. Okay. And um, see, they must understand the West has a history of remembering, remembering any major events in their past. Uh, we, unfortunately, don't. Even a memorial in India took almost how many, 70 years to uh, be made. Right, right. So we don't have a sense of history as much as the West has. And it's very important to remember, remember the past so that we don't repeat the mistakes later. Uh, apart from US and France, yeah. which are the other countries uh, where uh, you have gone and appreciated uh, their uh, military paintings? Um, I've, I've been to Russia, I've been to America, Europe, and. I, th I think Russians have a bigger tradition. Okay. Yeah, their museums are, of course, a little more, I would put it more colorful uh, or um, uh, exaggerated a bit in terms of showing b victory and valor uh, compared to the um, uh, European American version. But all, all, all Western countries, including Russia, has a tradition of military art and it's, uh, it's, they take a lot of pride in it and which I wish this country does the same. Okay. Now, we spoke about Delhi, the Rashpati Bhavan, NDC, South Block, National mm. War Museum. Now, up beyond Delhi, which are the other prominent places where your work gets displayed? You mentioned one, IMA Dehradun. Yeah, IMA, IMA Dehradun, uh, NDA, uh, okay. uh, National Maritime Museum, all my ships, I did a lot of ships for the Navy, okay. uh, decommissioned ships, right. which were decommissioned. So that's in Bombay and Cochin, um, and if a few of them in, you know, maybe Bangalore and Madras. But uh, by and large, uh, the major works are all in Delhi. I would also like to ask you the interesting uh, incident uh, relating to your painting, George Bush, the President Junior. Yeah. What actually had happened? Well, I, uh, I was commissioned by the U.S. Embassy, long time back, uh, to do a, port a portrait of uh, yeah, president. and uh, president, and uh, it was done uh, for the U.S. Embassy. At the same time, I I got a call for, to do for U.S. State Department in uh, Washington, and uh, so a couple of my portraits are now being placed there and in U.S. Embassy Delhi. Okay, and um, that's a time uh, I was asked to do a portrait. For, by General Wedge, who was the... the oh, the request came uh, from India? In, uh, no, for a portrait for the PM okay. to take to the U.S. when the okay. nuclear deal was signed. And uh, so General Wedge, who was the deputy... Uh, Marais, to, uh, yeah, the uh, previous chief. Yeah, the previous chief. Yes. Who was the deputy of um, the Na National Disaster Management. Yes. And the ch prime minister was the chairman. He was the vice chairman. So These were the days of Mr. Man, Dr. Manmohan Singh. Manmohan Singh. Okay. So I think he was influenced to get this painting done, which is right behind me. Okay. And, and so the last minute after all was done, there was a hitch in the, uh, in the nuclear deal. So he, this also got hammered. Some differences came up. Some differences came up. Okay. Now, <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, I will, we will see some of your favorite paintings. Uh, but here, sitting here, I would like to know which are your favorite colors that you use maximum? No, well, I, I'm, I'm basically uh, use sober colors. I'm, I'm not colorful okay. uh, like some paintings are. And I think the color really comes in modern art. You can play with any color, but in realism, you're restricted to so many things. And I'm a realistic artist. Um, and of the old school, as they could put it. Right. And um, I hope one day, as it always been for centuries before, that realism comes back. Modern art okay. is a new fad, and I, I, I think both of them can exist together. Okay. Well said. Uh, my last question: What are your dreams now? Yeah. My dreams? Well, I. Um, with barring the health issues I have right now, um, I, there's a book written, being written by about my uh, military paintings by General Ian Cordozo. <coughs> and um, so I'm looking forward to it. And most of the paintings you see here are being prepared for the book so that it can be uh, printed on in the book. And also, same time, the military prints can be made that people can buy it at a cheaper rate on Indian military uh, battles fought earlier. And uh, he, so he is concentrating on my book, and also at the same time, he's lending his, um, uh, <coughs> his, you know, his support or his uh, giving advice for a movie being made on him called uh, That would be uh, wonderful, and would find a good sort of uh, number of viewers. I would, uh, we would now move to some of your paintings. I'd mm. like you to describe them, mm. whatever are the main points, and also some of the pictures that you may have with the celebrities or your paintings or uh, cover designs that you did for India today. Okay. Thank you.